The purpose of this video is to uh, look at different forecasting techniques and then to choose one forecasting technique that best fits your data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to look at some data that we have, um, evaluate some different forecasting techniques and then choose the forecasting technique that gives us the least amount of deviation between the actual and the forecast. So what I have here typically uh, when we get started with a forecast is you have a you have some historical data. In this case I have 15 months of historical data on sales and so we're going to go in first of all with, let's just take a, a look to see if there's some sort of trend there because we already know that there are some forecasting techniques that do a better job uh, forecasting if there's a trend um, and so let's see if we if we have a trend here. So I've just put in a regular line plot. I'm going to add a trend line to it just like we've done in other cases. I'm just using a linear, just playing the equation and the R squared values. Let's come back over here and look at our line. Uh, okay, so our R squared value is about 0.13 there. Uh, really not much, <clears throat> not much going on this uh, that, that can be explained from a trend uh, with this. So let's, let's assume that there's really not a trend there based on the data that we have. So the next thing that we're going to do is let's go in and let's choose a forecasting period and a forecast evaluation period. Uh, and I'm just changing the sheets here so that you have a better visualization of what's happening. So what I mean by choosing a period is I have 15 months worth of data but let's use 12 months of this data uh, for a forecasting period and then use three months of it as my holdout uh, so I can evaluate my forecasts, okay? So once again, I'm going to take 12 months of it, I'm going to make my forecast basing it on these 12 months, and then I'll use these last three months as my um, actual data that happened uh, so we can evaluate my forecast. Let me sh show you once again. So we've chosen, we've plotted it, we've taken and chosen our forecasting period. Now we just want to make some forecasts using the methods that we have. As I mentioned to you, we're using the first 12 months here to make our uh, forecast. For example, if I'm going to do a one month moving average for January 2021, a one month moving average is nothing more than the previous month's demand, right? Okay, also, now that I've done that, one month moving average for February then is really what happened um, the month before. And same thing here, one month moving average really is what happened in the previous month. One month moving average, just a naive forecast. What about a two month moving average? Well, two month moving average is the average of the two previous months. I'm just going to go ahead and advance this over so that you see the point. Three month moving average is the average of the last three months. I'm going to pull this over. Okay. So we have done, uh, these are my forecasts now from one month, two month, three month moving average. I can also go ahead and do a um, exponential smoothing. Uh, as you remember, exponential smoothing is the alpha value. In this case, we're using an alpha of 0.2. So 0.2 times the actual data plus one minus 0.2, which is 0.8 times the forecast. So I've got that for my first forecast. And you can see that once now that I have a forecast for January 2014, then I can do, again, my 0.2 times what the actual data was for the previous month plus 0.8 times my forecast from the month before, which is really this column here or this cell here, right? Okay. Um, we should have enough data there well to be able to pull that over and make sure that that worked. Looks at like everything is good there. You know how to do a 0.4. You also know how to do a linear regression, so I'm going to let you do those. 
Once you get your forecasts in here, now let's go in and take a look at which forecasting technique gave us the least amount of deviation. So let's look at, and in this case, we're just going to use the, we're going to use the MAD as our uh, forecasting metric. That's the one I've chosen. You could have used MAPE if you would have preferred to use MAPE or mean squared error. I chose MAD. So if I'm looking at the absolute devi deviation between the forecast, whoop, I did that backwards, between actual and forecast for my one month moving average, we get three for January. I'm just going to go ahead and bring these across. Three for February, two for March. I can calculate the MAD by taking an average of these. So my average MAD, or my MAD, um, using forecasting technique for one month moving average is I'm off by 2.67 uh, units each month. Okay, now let's look at what happens with uh, my absolute deviation between what actually happened and my forecast for a two month moving average. Bring it across. See, we can see from the two month moving average, two month moving average, my absolute deviation is a little bit higher. Using a naive forecast would have been better than using a uh, two month moving average because I actually end up with a lower uh, deviation, um, you know, deviation between my forecast and my actual. Let's try this one more time. Let's use the uh, absolute value of my forecast using a three month and my actual amount. Let's bring this down. Wow, uh, it looks like a three month moving average is, uh, uh, gives me less deviation as well. One more time, let's do it with the, oh, I did it backwards. Not that it would matter with an absolute value, but using an exponential smoothing approach. And so you can see what I've done here now. Um, I have evaluated these four. Uh, you'll evaluate more, but what you're really looking for at the very end of this is you're looking at the, the lowest MAD. And the reason that this lowest MAD is, is important to you is it says, you know, if you want to choose a forecasting technique that gives you the least amount of deviation, the least amount of error between your forecast and the actual value, you want to pick the MAD that has the lowest value. Which one is that for us? Let's see. That's a three month moving average. For this data here, for this item, um, going forward for my forecasting, I would be very comfortable going into the boss and saying, you know what, I'm using a three month moving average to forecast sales in the future because it gives me the least amount of uh, problems. Or I shouldn't say that, it gives me the least amount of deviation between my, my actual and my forecasting. Again, I did not do the 0.4 exponential smoothing. I didn't do the linear regression. Um, but you should go ahead and do those things to make sure that you're choosing uh, the forecasting technique that works best for the data that you have. I know that that may sound odd, but I'll tell you from years of working with data, some data just work better with different forecasting techniques uh, than they do with others. Choose one that you can explain. Choose one that makes sense. Choose one that gives you the least amount of error between the forecast and the actual.